Hey guys, what's up? Today's video, very simple. We are gonna be building a NAS. Now, it's mostly gonna be going over what we've built already and then adding in our PCI Express cards and going over the whole NAS, but this is the first part of a little kind of series. I wouldn't really call it a series, but basically I'm building out some enterprise grade networking stuff here for kind of a home lab setup. And I just wanna go over some of that. So this is gonna be the first video, which is gonna be just building out this NAS, which is gonna be the basis for a lot of our storage. It's actually gonna be two network attached storage devices. So stay tuned for the second one, which is gonna be a lot smaller, but this one is going to be the core NAS, which stores all of things like my video footage and important documents, you know, past video, stuff like that. So that's what this NAS is for. The next one we're gonna talk about in that video, but first we're gonna get into this NAS, which right now is the most important because I need someone to put this footage. This drive that I'm recording on has no space left on it. So I gotta make this quick. So let's go over real quick what we have so far. I need more desk. I gotta work on my lighting. So right now we have this. <laughs> So this build is in a be quiet case. I got sent a little while ago and any products I mentioned that are still relevant will be in the description below. So if you wanna find some Amazon affiliate links, uh, you'll find those in the description below for anything that's still for sale or the next version of the product if it's not for sale anymore. This be quiet case, I chose it because A, it fits the motherboards I have and B, it's super freaking quiet. So this is gonna be running in here. So I need it to be super quiet so I can film videos and do other stuff without having the sound be too obnoxious so that's why I chose the be quiet case here now you may recognize this build from one of my past videos where I built a streaming PC in this I opted to change out that build for a different smaller streaming PC but that video may or may not be linked in the description below if you want to watch that video building out this system as a streaming PC what's in it is a Ryzen Threadripper 2920x so a bit old but completely perfect 12 core 24 thread decent clock speed for any NAS workloads which like I said, you don't need much CPU for that. And in this case, we chose it because it has a ton of PCI Express. We have all these slots on the motherboard, which is perfect. And all these slots operate at their full electrical capacity. So it's awesome, especially when we're using as much PCI Express bandwidth as we will be in today's build. Now I did switch out the cooler. It used to have the Enermax cooler, but there was a little bit of a problem where they got like sludge in them. So I swapped out for an EVGA cooler. Uh, Ace attack, so we know it's good quality. And besides that, it's just got 32 gigs of this super cool red PCB DDR4. So this is InnoDisk wide temp DDR4. It's meant it's made for operating temperatures that are like super low and super high wide temperature. But I used it because it's super stable. It's only 2666, but it's just the most stable RAM I have, and I know it works well in this system. Plus, the red PCB is pretty cool. And finally, the last important specs are our power supply and boot drive. So for the power supply, we went with something pretty sick. You may have seen this before. This is the FSP Twins Pro 500 watt power supply. It's actually two 500 watt 80 plus gold PSUs in a single ATX form factor. It is awesome. That means we can put these on two separate circuits, two separate UPSs, and we can have a failure up to the circuit, power failure, whatever. And as long as one of these two power supplies remains on, the entire system stays up and running. You can actually pull these out while the system is live and the system just keeps on chugging. I do wanna say FSP did send this over a good while ago, a couple of years ago actually, but it's been rocking ever since and it's a great power supply. So that'll be linked in the description below if you're looking for something like that. Now you may have to forgive my cable management here. Oh, well, good thing I opened this back panel because my drive came disconnected. So in the back here, like I said, excuse my cable management, but we have our boot drive. This is the DC1500M from Kingston. This is a 960 gig U.2 NVMe SSD. So it's got four PCIe lanes, PCIe 3.0. So it is an NVMe drive. It's just a U.2 form factor for servers. And this drive is enterprise grade, it's awesome. It's been chugging, it's super fast, get over a gigabyte per second sustained on it, at least in my use case. And Kingston sent this over a while ago, so there's a lot of things that companies sent over in this build because they just sent me some really cool stuff. And that'll be linked in the description below. It's just a sick boot drive and I trust it. So that's why it's the boot drive for this NAS. Now it's the boot drive, but it's also gonna be used to store files that I really don't wanna lose because that's one of my highest quality drives. Now, finally, we can get to the PCI Express cards that we're using in today's build. And we have a, a wide selection. Now, whilst I do have these, you probably can't see them, but I do have SATA cables ran to like the top of the case because I was gonna mount drives on the top. This is not really a NAS case. So I was trying to make do by running them on the top and having a fan blowing through across them. Uh, I actually am not using that many drives. So whilst this system will be super expandable, uh, I'm just gonna be using three NVMe drives today. 
So I'm just going to use the PCI Express slots with some adapters. All right, uh, quick editor's note. I actually went with something else. So basically, some of the stuff I'm about to say is going to be a little wrong. Here's what the completed build actually looks like on the inside. So as you can see, I did mount the NVMEs to the top of the case. Uh, and then I used the RAID card with a bifurcated 16X up top so that we could have that in there like so because i had a problem with the samsung drive so just ignore the samsung drive you'll be seeing it again in a different nas build and uh finally uh, i did put a p4000 in there just because i had it lying around and then we also have a full 16x bifurcatable slot left over just in case you want to add like a bunch of m.2s in some kind of raid so just you know quick note but the first thing we're going to put in is our bottom card and that's going to be this melanox connect x3 network interface card this card operates at 40 gigabits per second. That's right, this is a 40 gigabit network card. And that's going to be plugged in to this really cool switch I just got. This is the Microtik CRS uh, 326-24S plus 2Q plus RM. Sure. So, let me break that down a bit. 24S plus for the 24 SFP plus 10 gigabit ports, 2Q for the two QSFP plus 40 gigabit ports, and RM means rack mount, because this is technically a rack mount switch. Now it's not actually that deep. It's a super sick switch, and when we go over the networking part of this entire little home lab enterprise setup series, uh, we're gonna go over this in a little more detail, because this is the new core switch. And this thing is just awesome. Basically, it gives us two 40 gig ports, one of the 40 gigs is going to be used to, for a connection between two switches, this one and another one you'll see in a later video. And then this other 40 gig is going to go to this NIC, so we get a 40 gigabit uplink to our NAS. What that basically means is that we can have multiple people, multiple devices, whatever, accessing this NAS at a full 10 gigabits per second from each station. And we can do that up to four people, so long as the drives can handle all that throughput. Now, I don't think we're going to be pushing that much data, but... You know, it's nice to have, and these were cheap. I got these for like 20 bucks. So we're going to put that in our bottom slot, which is just a PCIe 8X slot, 16 physical, 8X electrical, and this is an 8X card because technically it can do two 40 gigabit connections, which uh, we won't be using just yet. Now for our next card, it's actually going to be our graphics card, which this is a very basic card. This is a Quadro P2000. And yes, I am planning to run Windows Server 2022 simply because I am not good with Linux. I don't know how to use it. I don't want to use it. That Windows Server is just super easy. But if you're a Linux guy and you want to walk me through how to set up a decent NAS build, then I'd love to hear it. All right, next we have our drives. The fun part. You probably should have started with them. It's NAS, but there's a, there's a video I just thought I would make. <laughs> this is a Samsung PCI Express SSD. This is not an adapter. This PCIe 4.0 8X connector right here is actually for the SSD itself. This is a straight up drive and this thing is freaking sick. This is a 1.6 terabyte PCIe 8X SSD. I have no idea what it is. I got it on eBay and I'm hoping it's really freaking fast. Speaking of the next drives, we've got two more U.2 NVMe SSDs. Now these are pretty sick. These are SanDisk Skyhawk U.2 NVMe SSDs. Each one of these is 3.84 terabytes of PCIe 3.0 X4 NVMe SSD bandwidth. Now, these drives are actually rated for a lot slower speeds than some other NVMe drives. They only do about 800 megabytes per second sustained, but can boost well over one gigabyte per second under short loads, and then sequentials, they go down to about 800 megabytes per second. But they're good long-term enterprise drives, and I got them for cheap. This is where this is the part of build you guys might want to emulate at home. The Threadripper is a great idea. They're cheaper now than they were. You can get the CPU for like 140 bucks. Motherboards have come down in price. Coolers are easy. And then you have a ton of PCI Express. And these drives, I got them for $120 a piece for 3.84 terabytes of NVMe SSD. Now, I'm going to configure these likely in a RAID 0 to make one singular 7.68 terabyte SSD that will probably easily be able to reach speeds of sustained 1.5 gigabytes per second. And that will even saturate a 10 gig link, which is why we have a 40 gigabit link in the system. Because whilst I could go 25 gig SFP 28 uh, for the home use and 
just because it's a much newer than SFP plus and QSFP plus, it's really not worth to go the 25 slash 100 gigabit bandwidth route in terms of switching and stuff like that as it is go with 10 gig and 40 gig, which is completely fine for my case. And now we have the completed build. Unfortunately, at this time, I have nothing to use it with that isn't required for using it. And what I mean by that is, well, I need to offload this footage to here and I only have one recording drive. It's a Kingston SSD that they sent me. It's the only one that actually works well enough with this recorder because it's recording at 300 megabytes per second for this footage. And that's the only drive is the Kingston, I believe it's a KC600. It's the only drive I have that can keep up with the bandwidth without the recording stopping at some point. So I have to export it to this NAS, which I can't record with while exporting it to this NAS. But in the follow-up, when we come back with the rest of the home lab setup, we will be using this NAS and I will be showing off that whole thing. So stay tuned for that. Besides that, I hope you guys enjoyed this little, a little more of a, I guess you can call it a serious video where I actually just build out a piece of enterprise equipment that I just need for work and, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, but stay tuned. I have some really awesome, at least ideas. I don't know how well the videos are going to come out, but the ideas are sick. So stay tuned for those. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.